Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome. We got a bonus episode this week. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. The Giggle Boys return. It's it's the. Yeah, it is now. It is. Yeah, we're the you, Giggle Boys. You own us. The you can Giggle do Boys. whatever you want with us. You have just joined our uh, our network, Tetherball Academy Media. Could not be happier. Yeah. By the way, it was the audience. So the audience were the ones who were like, hey, dude, get these fucking guys on. When they were on the show, they were really funny, and I think they'd be an awesome addition to the network. And you know we don't care about anything, so it's just like, <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, you can say I whatever think you want. I the audience is right. I did yeah. too. I did too. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, the audience rules. I'm They're glad smart we're all people. On the same page. <laughs> Finally, this is the only time where I've ever liked democracy. Yeah. The rest of the time, I'm like, the average person's an idiot. And now he's like, the, the average person here is amazing. I yes. love all of them. So well, this they're is like, a get true them democracy, not a corporate oligarchy. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, it will be yeah, someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. We we'll get big enough. It'll all get ruined. I would love to be ruined. presented by Nestle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Spotify is going to come in, buy out, and then nuke half your episodes like Rogan. So of course they will. Half is so small. <laughs> We will have one episode left, and it'll be the 10-minute one where we talked about transitioning to drinking bros. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, dude, I feel like that's going to be the, uh, the dystopian future is we've all signed with either Spotify or Apple, and then they've all thrown us off at some point, and then we'll be zigzagging through yeah. fucking Patreon and all that other stuff. You guys have a Patreon? Yeah, patreon.com slash giggleboys, yeah, where we have is. bonus episodes, a lot of bonus episodes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of bonus episodes. Put, point that mic a little closer to you. There you go. There yeah, it is. Boy. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do I put it in my mouth? You can yeah. put it in your mouth, on your mouth, around your mouth. Uh, oh, is this this is Dan's microphone That's usually? Dan's, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It, uh, it's, He's uh, so manly. It's that vainglory beard. I, I've never had a beard in my entire life, but it's up there, yeah. This is like three days of growth. Oh, dude. I, I have... Permanent baby face. So I, can I, you grow one? No. Yeah. So I guys got that in college. Yeah. I can grow a huge mustache in a in a like a flavor saver, uh, like to the nth level. You um, play the bass? Uh, no, no. But I played wiffle ball in a movie, so Hell it, was, yeah. it was for a movie, and I was like, oh shit, I can really do this. But the rest of it is patchy, so I can't I can't grow a beard. Mine comes in in four colors. Is, is it really? <laughs> yeah, I've got Which like four: red, blonde, black, and and uh, brown, like my normal color. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I did a bunch weird. of roids when I was younger, and that really brought out the beard. Dude, everybody who did steroids at a younger age had s tiny hands. Um, and look at whoa, these. Oh, I don't know, man. Look at these things. That's, those are real tiny. <laughs> those are real. Small. Yeah, those are some like uh, self-esteem <laughs> helpers. Bigger than my hand. You know? <laughs> those are some they make Trump my hands. dick look small. They're so huge. Those are some Trump hands. Um, <laughs> no, but when, when uh, <laughs> Wait, have you seen that Always Sunny where the guy wears the, he's insecure about his tiny hands, so he wears those gloves? Yeah, the creepy Uncle Jack or whatever. I have smaller hands, um, and I'm I'm not insecure about it. Yeah, I, I don't. I, what would I do with a big hand? Here's my thing: I have giant hands and giant feet, and then a very mediocre penis. Yeah. So it, it, it's just like such a like it, you know, you see me from a distance you're like well he's big maybe you know something's good there and then you hear this voice yep. and you're like oh he still hasn't hit puberty well you know? the thing about steroids is that they say that they make your balls smaller but they actually make your dick bigger so your balls just look smaller by comparison I look I I don't mind having tiny balls or no balls at all like That's if that was an option <laughs> fine let's do it because what the fuck am I gonna do with them right whenever you come they shrivel up back in your body anyways so it's not like you get this huge slap like a wave hitting the shore like of, of, yeah. like the north shore and then boom, it's this explosion of fucking but do you ever rope some girls you ever play with them though where you like you like suck in your gut and you make your balls pop up occasionally but it then it hurts dude i had a girl she had my balls in her mouth and she was like uh and then i sucked in my gut and went, like no way greatest sound you, you can't do that with no balls no you can't right it's true uh lance armstrong's only got one he's a uniball i think that's the way to do it because yeah. because then you, you know it can be like just under your dick protected it's more aerodynamic it is it, he might have done it for cycling i don't even know if the cancer oh. thing was real all those years he might have just done it for cycling Dude, well i heard he was on steroids as well which i think is a good <laughs> move if you only have one testicle yeah i'm so pro blood doping though so same like same. when i learned what that was like oh you mean you have to go into the mountains and train and then you have to put your own blood back into you you deserve it you crazy vampire genius. Yeah, like what's the point of science for human advancement if we can't use it? I look, I, I fucking agree. Full like I wish there was a pill though. I don't wanna needles and There's put them pills. in cocaine and all that shit. But not like the the good ones where it's like 
You heard of D-ball? Yeah, yeah. But D-ball, like, dude, you can't. That'll ruin your life. It'll ruin your life. <laughs> like, you'll be dead in, like, an hour. Um, all those guys what who were dead from steroids. D-ball? I'm interested. It's uh, a it's in, an, in an hour? All the, oh, he dude. Said, no, it, just, it fucks up your liver. And you'll grow, you'll grow tits if you don't do it. If you do it properly, you can... I can't, I can't put anything else on my liver. What he, steroids were you doing? Um, I did... I did a lot of shit. I didn't know they were steroids at the time. I was like 17 and I was like fucking Mark McGuire over here, dude. That's I think a I did Mdrol for the first time when I was okay. 17. I was like, oh, it's a supplement. And it turned out it was like the most gnarly steroid you can do. <laughs> I did not do my research. Did you get fucking huge? Look at me. <laughs> dude, it is very funny to look at young pictures of Eli because he was such a scrawny little, you know, yeah. Malibu's most wanted body style. He's from the <laughs> shopping mall of Irvine, California. Are so. you really? Yeah, I oh, dude, I've uh, Irvine. I used to go to once a year for a concert, and that was it. The uh, at the Verizon Amphitheater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who'd you see? Um, there was a uh, K Rock used to do this thing like. Uh, oh yeah. Um, a, it was a roast. Some weenie uh, roast. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And there was like a ninety bands. Last time I was there, Foo Fighters was there. Ooh. And they rocked the shit. It hey, was so a fun amazing day. live. By the way, uh, a lot of people in the chat are asking if we're having you guys on for Pride. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I always yeah. have to come out as straight. Hey, it's me, a straight man, Michael. I know. Uh, yeah. Dude, I mean, I hate women so much, I might as well be gay. <laughs> Dude, I would love to be gay. Like, if there was a pill and I could be gay, that's why it's so infuriating to be called gay so much. It's because, yeah. like, yeah, I wish, man. It'd be easier, wouldn't it? I was do, with this Do you know girl. about Grindr? Oh, it's... Have you seen it? <laughs> every, every conversation I've had with, like, a gay buddy of mine, the stories they tell, I'm like, I'm jealous. I was like, so what did you guys do? Man, we worked out hard and we fucked. And I was like, yeah. all right, cool. And then afterwards drank, watched a game, played yeah. some video, and I was like, uh, okay, so where's the bad shit? Right? And I'm like, where, where is that? So when I lived in LA, my office mate at my old job was like a gay man in his like late 30s, mm -hmm. but he'd been out forever because it's LA where they don't give a shit. Yeah. So he's like completely inundated in gay culture. So he would show me like the gay news sites, the gaily grind. And they'd yeah. be like for fall, they'd have pumpkin spice poppers. And then he was showing me fucking grinder and like it's down to the foot. Oh, it literally yeah. shows you proximity down to the foot. So he's like, if I'm in West Hollywood at one of the gay bars, the 600th closest, like furthest away person from me that's online right now mm -hmm. is 35 feet. Yeah, it's right there. And they're just there. Like, he was like, you know, if sometimes when I'm just feeling like I don't want to deal with someone, I'll just post that I want someone to come over. I'll leave my door unlocked. They'll drop a load at me and then just leave. Yeah. And, and like, he just goes, he's like, and it's safe. I make sure I pick the guys that are on prep. Yeah, I, I always used to say like, uh, th that we need to be, uh, we need to be attracted to women so we can like advance our careers. So, if it was too easy to get laid, then we wouldn't get shit done. Right. But then I look at gay people and they get laid so easily and they're all successful. All of them. All they of all them. got money, they got their own business. Yeah. They're out partying every they're night. Saving all that money on birth control. They have the best drugs, the best parties, everything. I, I put my buddy up to a challenge one time in LA. I said, look, because we were going to see a movie mm -hmm. uh, at Arclight. I'll, yeah. I'll never forget this because it was sold out and it was typical LA Friday night bullshit where mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, yeah. sorry, you can come back for the 10 o'clock instead of the 7.30 or whatever. And I was like, there was a bar in there and I was like, we'll go to the bar. And he goes, man, I could, I'd be, I could be getting my dick sucked right now. And I was like, where, by who? Yeah. And he goes, oh, I can just go on fucking grinder and get, you know, whatever. And he goes, I bet you I can get my dick sucked in under an hour. And I was like, great, I'll buy your tab until the next movie starts. I want to see this go down. He got this motherfucker up to P2, parking lot two, uh, got his dick sucked right yeah. I mean, r dude shows up in a car, boom, pulls in, sucks his dick, and he's out of there. And I was like, fuck you, dude. Insane, you you can do right? that in the theater at Arclight, though. They got those reclining chairs. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Well, you didn't want to deal with the guy. Yeah, you, like, don't wanna, yeah, you don't want to watch a fucking movie I'll go movie hop in your him. car, yeah, you I fucking gawk gawk, and then I'll go watch my movie. Yeah. You don't want to watch a three-hour movie with, with some dude who just showed up to suck your dick in a, in a car. I'm yeah. just thinking, I, I, went to, I was seeing a girl, and we fooled around in the Arclight Theater, and it, it was uh, no problem. Yeah. No one was, yeah, no yeah. one was. No one cares. No one saw. No. If you're, and it, look. But then know, I had to pee, because I was what drinking, everyone did when and they I, were 16, I, I peed though. in a cup, and then she walked out. Oh, of, <laughs> of, the, of the movie? Yeah, she was like, I can't believe you did that. I was like, eh, I thought you knew me. Was it, was it afterwards? Midstream. Oh God! You just got up and left. Yeah, I understand that though. I understand you can't be fucking a girl and then just pissing in a cup inside the movie yeah, theater. Like, correct. That was a big ask, getting yeah, her listen, to fuck you in a movie theater. You signed up for this, lady. <laughs> yeah. 
I think that is the thing that like I admire most about Eli being such a like open degenerate is yeah. that like anyone that gets involved knew what they were doing. Oh, for sure. And as the podcast starts to get bigger and all that shit, like then they'll know and then they'll be disappointed if you don't do shit like that. Yeah. So my favorite part about having a podcast, which I've been saying for years since I've been doing Casper, because this is my solo one, mm -hmm. is that um, there's either two types of people that see my podcast. That either one group sees it and they're like, this guy's hilarious. I want to talk to him. Or one group sees it and they're like, this guy's insane. I never want to communicate with him ever. And so it splits the crowd. So I never have to deal with the people that don't, don't like me. And the only people that come talk to me are already like kind of know who I am. And they already yeah. fuck with me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, um, we were going through some of your old catalog uh, before we asked if you wanted to join us. <laughs> you did a fucking episode with John McAfee, RIP. I did. Who just, Rest in peace. Who he got died. assassinated. He was assassinated. Rest in by poop the hammock. Yeah. All right, the documentary he was get, he was pooping through a hammock on that. people. I can't get behind that. He, he <laughs> denies those allegations. He was a good guy. He was respectful Wouldn't to me. Would you deny those allegations? No, I would not. So what's the real story here with with McAfee? Because I, I we never had him on the show, but so he was uh, big on tax evasion. He, his whole thing was that it's not in the Constitution. He was big on crypto. He. Um, uh, all of Hillary's servers were protected by McAfee software, which he oh. obviously had the back door to. So he had posted multiple times on Twitter that he had information, 23 terabytes uh -huh. of uh, information on like every major three letter agency and, and government agency that if he was ever to Epstein himself, or, or get Epstein or suicide himself, sure. that that would be released to the press. So we're going to get some? So something might be coming out. He might have been bullshitting. He's kind of a crazy dude. I hope it comes out in the next update of the fucking antivirus. Oh, Everyone God, just goes to download it, and the new terms and conditions are just like, oh my the God. CIA raped Hitler or something. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if people still use McAfee antivirus software. I don't think, I think you that can was get like it off. Is AOL it McAfee thing. or is it McAfee? Ma I think it's McAfee. Uh, Bob, can we get a clarification on this one here? with uh, McAfee. Mac McAfee, okay. All right, McAfee's weird, man. It's really weird. Do you McAfee. I'm John McAfee. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pot of gold. So here's my take on it. At two uh -huh. hours after he died, um, his Instagram just posted the letter Q mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a huge caps. Mm -hmm. um, and then Instagram deleted his entire account. It no longer exists. Also, th this uh, suicide happened... I'm using air quotes because this is going on audio. Too. Audio as well, yes. Yeah, so yeah. this is not a suicide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this happened, I think, hours after Spain agreed for the U.S. to extradite him. Correct. So they were like, all right, we got him. Boom, let's kill him. It yeah. just, dude, it makes fucking total, it totally uh, ties come in. Come on, you've never been like real sad though? I would have killed myself in that situation. I, I would have killed been, myself. I would not. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I would have for sure killed, he was 75 already, years old. Yeah. He tweeted like two weeks ago about how miserable he was and how all of his sadness just feels like tears in a rainstorm. Like he was talking depressed. I didn't see that. And he, he said he was happy. No, he, he did not say he was happy. He made one tweet to fucking stoke the fire because he's an old man losing relevance. And he was like, hey, if I had fucking kill myself, it was, Ep it was an Epstein <laughs> thing. And then he kills himself, which is also a very good, we were talking about this, cool ways to kill yourself. That's a pretty fucking cool one. He hung make, himself. He right? hung himself. Yeah, no, no, himself. I just mean to create to, to a lure around it. Oh, yes. To be like, I'm not gonna kill myself. Eh. This is, this, so that's exactly what I said. Cause I, I watched that doc, the one where uh, he was getting shit on or shitting on people through the hammock mm -hmm. and vice versa. Um, he was also cooking bath salts, allegedly. You bet he was, you bet he was. Cause uh, he had a whole like meth lab. Yeah. It looked like a meth lab. They tested it for all these illegal drugs. Bath salts was not one of the ones that was regulated at the time. So they were like, we don't know what this is. Guy's always been ahead of the curve. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if, if he figured out the viruses in your computer, congratulations, he can figure out bath salts. It's in the computer. Yeah. But with that, all of his shit that he, or whatever the mystique he created around himself, if you were going to off yourself, this would be the best way to do it and then live forever with this fucking, oh, McAfee was a fucking hero. Yeah. QAnon did it. He did it like... It, it makes sense, and it's a great way to go out. Like, and it's a great way to schedule a post like you know you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. All right, I'll schedule a post with the letter Q. Like, what better way to instigate a bunch of bullshit? Like, <laughs> No, I'm 100% convinced he was assassinated. I will, I will, I'll sit back, I'll wait for the data to come forward. Sure. 
but right now I, it's in my gut. I feel it. And when it's in my gut, I'm usually right. <laughs> That's <laughs> when it's in my gut. When was the last I'm time getting raped? Something. Yeah. I was going to say it was in your gut. You weren't raped. Like yeah. when was it? Oh, uh, when I knew this podcast was going to blow the fuck up. How about that? Can, uh, okay. So I realized a lot of people are like, so what's your podcast about? And I'm like, I don't know. We're just bullshit. I realized that I think the best explanation is so me and Mike are both stand up comedians. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. That's kind of all we are. We're not real people. All we do is joke. It's a defense mechanism, really, but uh, yeah. it's a great one. Like, you guys our, are smoking weed all day long. It's great. Our lives are jokes. Yeah. <laughs> They're good jokes, though. Yeah. But so I think the point of Giggle Boys is me and Mike constantly trying to be funnier than each other while trying to help each other be funnier at the same time. I like it. So it's yeah. kind of like a race to the top of comedy. It's like an iron sharpens irons, but it's like clown swords. <laughs> retard sharpens <laughs> retard. Yeah. It's... Well, you know, like, I, I started thinking about this uh, when I, like, I got really serious about comedy in May of 2018. Mm -hmm. I just started grinding here in Austin. And then, like, six months in, I moved out to L.A. and was like, you know, I'm really going to give it a go at this. And I put myself out there, and I did, you know, I did as many mics and shows as I could. And then I was at a comedy festival in Portland, and I was all barred out, and I was fucked up. And I was like, you know, I'm going to have a good time. And I got this hand tattoo of a snake, and it says, I've made him a snake. And it's just, like, such a visible, very stupid tattoo. Yeah. And I love it. And so I just started collecting all these dumb tattoos. So I realized like most people like they get tattoos to like symbolize something or mean anything. But I'm here for entertainment. So I just got a bunch of retarded stuff. That's great. It's so much fun. I have seven very retarded tattoos that are not visible. Go. It's great. So I got Satan fucking a goat. Okay. Yes. Where's that? Uh, at? Satan wearing snow. Everything's like around my ass and like hip area. Okay. So if I'm wearing boxes, you can't tell. Okay. So like by the time I fuck a girl, it's like too late. I have a tattoo of a red flag. Just a red flag? Yeah, because yeah, he's a red flag. Say, I, got a red, I got a lot of red flags. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. I didn't know if you were a big <laughs> fan of China or something. That's great. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the, best, the absolute best tattoo that he has is I was there when he got it. You don't want to talk about it? Uh, no. <laughs> All of this shit, and then now you don't want to talk about it. I'm talking it. about the other ones, and then I got a... Uh, uh, so I got, I got the... Is it uh, a Nazi symbol? No, it's did you get funny. a fucking... Did you get a Hitler? No. Well, listen... <laughs> There's, now we have to know. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you off air. We're live. Is it exactly. that crazy? Listen, man. We're uh, no, no, no. Is it no. that crazy? I'm you don't gonna... have to say what it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you I got a tattoo. Ball sack? I got a tattoo on my ball sack of the Louis Vuitton monogram, so I could tell girls I got them a designer bag. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you. Dude, it's 100% real. <laughs> Not live it on was YouTube, at, probably. But. It was at Native Hostel, and he tells me he's doing it. I'm like, there's no fucking way he's going to go through it. That, like, the needle's going to hit his sack, and he's going to go, oh, fuck, and, yeah. and drop out. You can't feel shit on your sack. It's like your Your, uh, your elbow skin, yeah. yeah. yeah your so I had, I had to bat wing it the whole time, and it, 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 was, it hurt, but like only for like two minutes. It was, it was like four lines, so. Sure, sure, but it's a Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've got the, the words Asian writing on my ass. Because <laughs> everybody's got Asian writing tattoos, so that way when I say, oh, yeah, I've got something sweet too, Asian writing. It, but it literally just says in English, Asian writing. Incredible. Oh, did, did you hear about, so our old producer, Gary Faust from Faust Media, that was the guy who produced Giggle Boys and Casper's before we came here. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, an agreement that well, Mike said he would get any tattoo that the viewers wanted if uh, one of our TikToks hit a million views. Uh -huh. And it happened literally the next day. Fuck. No shit. Yeah. And uh, they, Boosh. <laughs> I said on video, like, hey, I, just fucking, if we hit a million views, I'll get a tattoo and you guys can pick it. So the top. It'll never happen. <laughs> the top two uh, comments on, oh, on no. the TikTok. So the worst part, th for the first like hour and a half after we post the poll, someone put, get insert here as a tramp stamp and it is immediately leading. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm going to have to get that. And then uh, was that was that it? Is that what you went with? No, no, no. no. So then, then he then he there, then there was get daddy on your forearm in chinies because they misspelled Chinese because people on TikTok are retarded. So I was just going to get the phrase you. get daddy and chinies on your forearm <laughs> on my forearm like that. Yeah. But then what ended up winning like a last minute out of nowhere it comes in is get Gary your producer's face on your elbow so it looks like he's talking when you move so, your yeah. arm. <laughs> is that on your? No, it's on. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that's God. Gary right there. So that's Show Gary. Show that to yeah. Uh, point that more towards camera. So this is look at Gary. We look, affectionately call him Gar Dead Black Drunk Gary because that's what he looks is he like. Dead? Is he dead now? No, he's alive. Oh, okay, he's, he's still alive. Yeah, he's alive. No, he just looks dead in this tattoo. 
the guy did a great job and it looks just like the picture that we use where Gary's like all like hung over and shit. But the best part is, is now when I'm banging my wife, Gary's yeah. just watching. <laughs> so it's like, Gary, stop. The, the best part was none of our viewers even know who Gary is or what, or they don't no. know what he looks like, but we're always like talking to him off camera and he's always laughing in the background. He's, he was a good like uh, indicator of when the crowd should laugh. Too. Well, the beauty of it is, is like you could make up a million stories about whoever that is yeah. when you're out in the world of like, oh, that's oh, my grandfather sure. who used to molest me. And, you yeah, know, and I now just, he's always watching me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's watching me molest myself. Yeah. Because it's right there. It was his dying wish. Yeah. Is to be able to always watch me jerk it. So I got him <laughs> here. It's <That's> fucking awesome. <laughs> Dude, I've gotten, I used to be in a 12-step program because I thought I had a drug problem. So <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're smoking mass amounts of weed. Well, some yeah. of it's no, nicotine. No, these are nicotine. Some okay. of it. I don't smoke that much weed when I have to be on air. Don't lie. Don't lie. No, I get weird. I, I'll, like, forget. I'll get too in my head. Okay. I'll, like, okay. I'll, my, my thoughts will fractalize. You know what I mean? I'll just break it work? Yeah. No, not even close. Yeah. Not even close. Fractalized. Um, who did you have on the other day? You had somebody in here the other day. Was it uh, Malik? Yeah, we had Malik Bazil. Malik ba Bazil. Ba Bazil. Uh, he was one of my first friends in comedy. He's real successful now. He was on The Fighter and the Kids. Uh, did he, he get a, fired? Uh, Mutual. There was, there was, uh, there was, they had did an talk about it on our show? argument. No, we, we talked about it off air. Oh, off air. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, uh, um, a lot of people have been asking what happened there. I'm buddies with Callan. Um, so I know Callan cool. and Shab in real life, um, yeah, yeah. but we never talk about podcasts. So, um, just yeah, I think it was just like creative oh, differences. Uh, he's he's like, still cool with Callan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I uh, let's see. I saw Shab at uh, chatted with him at the Mayweather fight. Yeah. Uh, Mayweather versus uh, Logan Paul. That's I described Eli as a reverse Shab because he's good at comedy but shitty at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, dude. <laughs> Comedy's number one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he, it was a mutual agreement, and then they, they kind of bounced. Like, I, it was a weird stitch anyways. I'll tell you this from my side, because we went on live the next day um, when Callan, quote unquote, got canceled. Uh -huh. um, I've known him for 20 years, and I just said, look, I think this story is fucking bullshit mm -hmm. i went live on air and i was like there's no way this girl was like oh, i couldn't get him off me or whatever and i was like dude calendar back in the day was like 120 125 right i was like you weak anyone bitch. could get <laughs> yeah Callan off of you my four-year-old could get Callan off I was yeah, like, you got raped from a minion like it was, <laughs> yeah it was like 24 22 or 23 years ago whatever and like mm -hmm. the, since then the kind of the story's kind of disappeared and he's back which is great because I, I love well him. i think it was also a lot of guilty by association with the crystalia stuff dropping and they oh, had yeah. the sketch yeah, show yeah, on yeah. netflix slated and but that's what happens man is they they'll come after you when you get to a certain level and like right now they're i know the new york times is trying to do this hit piece on rogan mm -hmm. um so they're calling up everybody trying to figure out yeah, yeah, yeah. what their angle is or they're something. always trying to take down Rogan. Always. And but he's got he's, great he's, takedown he's defense. he's at the top. He's at the <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's true. And, like, I, he's such a weird guy. I don't, I don't think he's got any skeletons, to be honest with you. Like, so. I think, yeah. I mean, like, everything he does is very out in the open. And, like, all of the stuff, he even says, like, hey, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. he's not like, I'm trying to be a thought leader. I'm just trying him, to talk to thought leaders. Yeah, 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 All exactly. they have on him is shit that he has said on his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Openly to the world. Yes. Um, and then and they the, take it out of context, and then they're well, like... Well, I mean, that guy. works. You can cancel someone with a bunch of stuff out of context. Eh, you could. Our, by the way, our you thought can. leader here is Giorgio, um, and that's T-H-O-T, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Leading, leading the thoughts. Uh, did you guys w w meet originally? How did that work out, Giorgio? He's gonna he's gonna mosey on the mic. He was smoking weed too. That's the beauty about <clears> these Friday shows. No one gives a fuck us? around here. Or uh, uh, well, Giorgio. Yeah, it's it's. I learned more about the story last night at dinner. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but Eli was canceled by a mutual friend of the show. <laughs> really? <funny. laughs> don't say that. Who was it? I don't give a shit. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We'll gloss over that. Um, give me initials or something. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I was canceled for being a drug addict because. This person <laughs> who knew I was a drug addict thought that I would change even though I said, no, I love doing drugs and I'm going to keep doing them all the time. Is this a girl? Yeah. Sorry. Honestly, that's, it's, it's, that's, that's on them for thinking Eli's going to change. I've got to know who this is. Yeah, who gives a fuck that he's doing drugs? Who gives a shit? We'll talk about when Danthony gets back from, uh, from Vegas. Does we'll he talk about his trip. Does he know her? Yeah. 
Do I know her? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> This is such a fun, sneaky episode. Yeah, it is. I would love... What's the chat saying? <laughs> the chat's saying, tell Homeboy to fucking open up. Who is the fucking... No, so, stay okay, close, Eli. Stay not, strong. I'm not worried about getting canceled. I'm just worried about having problems in real life <laughs> with people in my social circle. <laughs> that's called being canceled. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what canceled uh, is. I mean, I'm not worried about losing any followers or no, views. No, I, I would like to keep our followers. That would, be, that would be good for us. This is a great new move. Let's not immediately ruin it with your penis. You um, <laughs> Michael McClure is saying, he's saying, where is Dan? Dan is currently in Vegas right now, partying his ass off. Uh, we did a show last night. and uh, Listen, I'll tell rocks. everything on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Tell everything on the Patreon. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, Dan and Dan Holloway is in, in Vegas. Uh, much needed vacay. Uh, look, we have to leave at least one day out of the year. I know I'm fucking here every goddamn day, but... Um, we typically but it's like he's still here because this two. still smells so manly. Still smells like his scent. Like yeah. this is, I feel because his beard's brushing against it. You know he oils that thing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if you took me to a gun range right now, I wouldn't miss. Like, like it would be nuts. You're absorbing his powers. So I, Dan, you're already about to not smile for the next 24 hours. Dude, so Dan looks exactly like a guy. Like like it may have even been him. Uh, I went to a shooting range for the first time. When I was like 19, and my buddy and I are there, and we're sh his dad was a veteran, so he you know taught him to shoot growing up. So my buddy takes me out, and we're shooting a pistol up in like the Dallas area. Mm -hmm. And then this dude comes in with a big long I don't know any of the names of guns, but it looked like a big scary rifle thing. Yeah, it was awesome. And he comes in and he puts on an Osama bin Laden like silhouette, and then sends it back like super fucking far. Yeah. And then like on the next time he takes two shots, and then he starts calling the thing back, and he looks over at us and he goes. Hey, boys, you know what color Osama's eyes were? What? And he goes, blue. One blue this way, one blue that way. <laughs> and then he pulls it off, and he'd shut out the eyes of the fucking silhouette that just left the shooting range. And that guy looked just like Dan. Yeah. So when I saw Dan, I was like, oh, is it him? Maybe. <laughs> like, it could have been. You want me to blow your mind even further? Yeah. We have, yeah, I've been drinking. We, we typically don't talk about this, but who cares? Uh, fuck it. We have in in the back, in the, in the room where you guys record next uh -huh. to um, our buddy is the one who killed Bin Laden. He signed a target of Osama Bin Laden back there, and we had it printed out, and he signed it. Uh, Wait, Osama Bin Laden was real? <laughs> I thought he was like Bad Santa. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, the guy that shot and killed him, yeah. he signed a, a shot killed we had him, yeah. So he's a, he's a friend of ours in real life, and so we, when originally we had just done the show, uh, I want to say it was three years ago, the first time. Um, so we were chatting about it, and I had him walk, walk us through it. And yeah. The, the, the funny thing is the way he describes it, his name is Rob O'Neill, by the way, but um, uh, the way he describes it, he's been on a thousand times since. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, the way he describes it, he was just like, look, when you're clearing out the rooms and going upstairs and all that stuff, like, I, I just happened to be the one when he popped out, right? Yeah. And it was just me left. And you're thinking, like, oh, man, it's some crazy shot or whatever. And I was like, how, how difficult was it? And he goes, probably the easiest shot of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? I go, Why? And he goes, well, she, he came out of a room, and then he had his uh, gun to his wife's head. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, yes. Uh, Osama Bin Laden. One names. of them. Uh, exactly. Um, and, like, thinking it was a hostage You think the other wives thing. were jealous? Didn't he have a bunch of porn? Uh, t tons. He had bunches of porn. Plus cool a bunch of wives. Tons. And, Let's get Oh, there, yeah. And it was, like, like all because the, they got all the drives and everything, too. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it was... Dude, the shit, catalog of, of his and Saddam's shit is endlessly fascinating. Of, of American porn and all that stuff. But uh, the, the problem was... American porn. Oh yeah, yeah. Ours That's is so better. funny that we everyone wants to fuck your white Everybody girls. wants, dude. We have the best porn, man. No, well, all the porn was to encrypt messages. Dan, Dan said this a million times. Correct. They like, hid yeah. the messages in the porn, and that's how they got the secret codes back and forth to each other. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, but wh oh, what so about MLK? Well, that ruined it for me. We'll hang, we'll, we'll hang on. So, yeah. so when uh, so when, he, when he killed him, um, yeah. Uh, I go, I said, why was the shot so easy then? And he goes, well, the wife was like 5'2", and he's 6'5". <laughs> so he was like, he was a foot taller, and he goes, boom, boom. I was like, the fuck are you going to do with this? Like, that's not going to do anything. So. You planned 9-11, and you couldn't even figure out a height difference? Yeah, <laughs> but they, they definitely were not expecting it, so. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll take you guys back You guys in that have some good afterwards. murderbilia, because you oh, have that, dude. and then you have an OJ helmet? Signed, o a guest just brought a signed OJ helmet, signed OJ jersey back there, and then we do this uh, fantasy football league, called the Cutthroat Killers League, where you, uh -huh. you had to have won 
killed your league, you know, yeah. twice. And so we give a signed jersey away from a murderer every single year. I love it. Yeah. So uh, the Have first you done year Ray was, Lewis. Th yes, th that yes. was this year. That oh, was this year, yeah. fucking amazing! He's my favorite murderer. So the year before was OJ. Uh, this year was Ray Lewis, and then I think Ray Carruth is next year. Awesome. Um, the Aaron Hernandez though. Because that's that was our our big one. You right? got to do an Aaron Hernandez pride jersey and get it signed. Oh, dude, dude, uh, that's I can I can even go further with that Aaron Hernandez. Like, can you imagine get like a rainbow jersey and oh man, and make it like a crop top jersey? Can I if I text you a picture? Can you post it? Uh, can you post it if I text it to you? Uh, just airdrop it. Yeah, just airdrop it All to right. you know. I, I, I relapse by the way. Ross's iMac. I, oh, yeah, I'm I, drinking bro now. I, I, I are you fucking yeah? There you go. There you go. Get fucked up. We don't care. It's a it's are a fucking really? bonus show on a Friday. Yeah. Let's party. Nice. Yeah. Um, I took a photo of my one of my best friends uh, with Aaron Hernandez, mm -hmm. um, and so when we, as soon as I find it, I'll, I'll text it to you and put it up on screen. But uh, uh, when the documentary aired on Netflix and everything else, we were able to to work back the timeline and mm -hmm. figured out that he had just murdered two people like a month before. I took this photo and I was like, "Shit, dude!" And when you see how happy Aaron is in this picture, you're like, "God damn it, man!" I it's mean, some people, murder everybody someone. gets weird fetishes. Maybe he like just super got off on the kills. I mean, it does sound because I like, like there. I remember when I was reading the Da Vinci Code the first time. There's the part where they talk about the like old priests would be fucking a chick, and then right as he came, he would also slit her throat. Oh and yeah, it was supposed to be like ultimate pleasure because you nutted while you took a life. Yeah, and it had some fancy Latin name. I was thinking like that kind of shit makes sense to me when you start talking about elite pedophile billionaires, where they're like, well, "What if I come in a kid while I kill it?" You know, is that even better? Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, so, like, you know, you think, like, yeah. there's got to be some crazy shit. You got to act fast because you got to siphon all that adrenochrome out. Well, everybody's yeah, tried to. all of the different ways to come. Yeah. Like, we're living in a golden age What of is come. in the Vatican vaults? That, by the way, that priest thing you're describing is just confirmation. Like, are you guys not Catholic? <laughs> what are you? Uh, <laughs> oh. Wait, didn't yeah. you go to a Catholic school? I did, but I didn't make it to confirmation. I got kicked out. Were you touched? Oh, yeah. No, you're, I, he, I'm he was, furious. He, he was too fat to get raped. You know, and, and it's crazy. so shitty because, like, so many comedians, like, we talked about this on one of our episodes. Someone's like, that's a Burt Kreischer bit. And it's like, it's not a bit. It's Every a bit. fat kid that didn't get molested at fucking Catholic school wishes they got molested. And that's the first question you ask. It's like getting picked last for dodgeball, but worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were like, was I not? It was my wife. Uh, we were talking about the Me Too thing on our on Ross Price Revolution. And uh, I was like, do you ever, did that ever happen to you? She goes, no. Was I not fucking hot enough for Harvey Weinstein? Like, right? This is bullshit. Um, and Who then said that? My wife. Yeah. And then she goes, uh, she also said, she goes, look, and to the other people who went upstairs and ended up boning him and got the Oscar, like, let them be on their own too. Like, they got a fucking Oscar out of it. Yeah. They thanked him for him. Like, yeah, yes. In this, like, the speeches. Afterwards. Right? Yeah. yeah. So. You know. And they earned it. His cock was gross. Here's the thing about women, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're all whores. Oh, boy. There it is. There it is. Let the real Eli out. <laughs> Let the real I've, Eli I've decided out. I will have made it as a comedian when I can say that on stage and I get a huge laugh. I don't, I don't feel like I'm there yet. But that's my goal. Here's the thing about women, man. They're all whores. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know the opener of that. Like where you'd be at, what city that would fly in? Maybe uh, Houston? <clears throat> no. Well, have you seen Jason Rouse perform? Uh, the, the, the crazy guitarist? Canadian? He, he just talks oh, about no. raping old women and shitting in their pussies. And he has an act out of fisting an old woman where he says that he like, like lifts her up, removes the diaper, with walks sound the effects. smell, really? and then goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the sound effects. For like 45 seconds. And then he pauses to wait for the mixed horror and mild laughter and then like he oh, scares God. the crowd to the point where he just gives the entire room stockholm syndrome <laughs> it's awesome yeah it's I one of those things where him. like you watch it and you're like how do you what is are it? people laughing yeah some some yeah. are laughing hard yeah it's really funny it, he is a master of splitting a room because he'll find where like the fucked up degenerates of the room are mm -hmm. and he will bring them out like it's incredible I'm trying to find this photo. The, the by first the way. time I saw him real. perform, yeah, no, no. I was jealous that he could pull that off. Dude, there's there's some comedians where you're just like, oh god damn it, I wish I could. I could That's how I always feel like when that. I watch Patrice. There's a oh, specific yeah. album where Patrice is arguing with this big black lady in the front row, 
And he's like, I bet your nipples look like 22-inch doves on a Cadillac. I'm going to tie them up like a balloon knot. And she's getting furious and, and like, yelling at him. He's like, don't worry, we're going to fuck after this. how we flirt. And, like, he literally is saying just the most heinous stuff. And the whole crowd is, like, nervously laughing about how hard he's roasting. And she's coming back. And then she says at some point, I got four kids. I ain't tired of your shit. And he goes, oh, you want punishment? You ain't telling me you got a ruined pussy? You got four kids out of it's incredible. He it's, didn't give a shit, but he, there was a weird, it's, it's the way you look in your delivery too. Like he's black. <laughs> he, had, he had this kind so, of voice. Like. So, yeah. okay. So Doug black sat. comedians can get away with a lot more than white comedians. I love it. Doug, so do I. Doug Stanhope is my all time favorite comedian. And uh, I, Doug Stanhope said that the only person he was like scared of to like get into it with was Patrice O'Neill. Really? Because he would like, light him up more than he could dish out. That's what everybody said, though, behind the scenes. They said Patrice was the fucking dude. But, yeah, but coming goat. from Stanhope, who I, he is my fucking number one idol. I could see you guys doing the same shit. Did you hear about his frequent flyer miles thing? With the bars that he yeah, stopped yeah, at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. no. We talked. Yeah, we talked about it. What's the thing? Uh, he used up all of his frequent flyer miles just to go to bars around the world. Um, but he didn't actually go into the, the countries. He just stayed in the airports to get fucked up. And so he ended up going to like... I would do some shit like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was 37 straight hours of, of that just flying around the world. I thought you just meant like... When you, he wait. seems like the kind of guy that would start a compound. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, yeah. Got, yeah. I, got in a bunch, I got a bunch of credit cards that I could use as uh, like passes into the Admirals Club. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear the... I haven't used them yet. The best life hack he taught me about traveling. Mm. You take those prepaid vanilla cards yeah. that are like the $50 debit cards. And after you've used all of them, when you're flying... You use that to pay for all your drinks and shit because they don't do all of the transactions until after you land. So you pay for all your drinks on the fucking prepaid card that has no money on it. No way. That and doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore? Yeah, I think it's because of me. <laughs> they found out? You yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I, I, the last couple times I tried it, as soon as I landed, they'd be like, hey, uh, your uh, card didn't go through, and I'm gonna have to pay for that if you don't. And I was no, like, oh. oh, and you felt bad. I didn't realize I was fucking over flight attendants. I'm yeah. so sorry. I thought I was fucking over the airlines. Airlines are the biggest piece of shit companies because they're oh. monopolistic and they're like, oh, we oversold the flight. Uh, we're looking for volunteers. 15. Last flight I was on, we're looking for 15 volunteers. Was to it go American? On the next flight. Um, Reason why I asked is Delta. They just one. furloughed like thirty percent of their workers and canceled like five hundred flights for the summer. After they used all their money for but stock how buybacks. Do you, yes. How do you oversell a flight? But like if I was selling a, a my car, some guy comes over with the money, gives it to me. I'm like, all right. Uh, actually, I just sold this car to someone else. So if you're gonna they're wait, do, for, hey, they're for doing the it with cars. Car. They're they're doing it with cars now too, man. Are so you yeah, they'll leave the picture up. I fucking raged on my other show about this. Uh, I was buying a car from my dad yeah. uh, for his birthday. And the one on the website, it was, uh, sorry, sorry. They were like, and they lied on the phone. They were like, it's right on here, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and no, they just you get down, down sold it three weeks switch. ago. We have so many millions of listeners. Everybody, somebody does that job. So I went out on air and I just said, all right, who sells fucking Jeeps? And uh, AJ Gamble, shout out to AJ Gamble. He was like, oh, dude, I can run that fucking thing. Turned out they had sold the car three weeks ago and just never taken it down. What so what they were hoping to tool. do was get you in there, yeah, bait and switch, and then sell you something else. And yeah. I was there should be a law. Like if you sell the fucking car, take it down from online. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, I, I mean, like it happens so much. I have a huge issue with bots for tickets to events. That is like my number one oh, grudge with dude. the world right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because like at the beginning of the pandemic, they were announcing just rare shows would pop up. Uh, like things that I wanted to go see and it'd be a drive-in show. And, you know, it'd be not a super crazy amount of money, but expensive. Sure. So would be like, all right, I'll pay the 150 bucks so that I can go and sit in a car with three of my friends and watch Third Eye Blind play. They're my favorite band. I know I'm gay, but <laughs> I love Third I Eye Blind. I wish you would step back from that. Le what, yeah. Did you go see him in Ventura? Uh, so I didn't get to go. Because I waited, I waited for the tickets to go on sale. In the car, right? I put the, yeah, it was in the car. So I, I was at that show. I took my child. I'm so jealous. Yes. I, I wanted to go so bad. I love them. That's the this weirdest thing This is a third eye blind, blind tattoo. <laughs> also, this Wait, is... Let's talk about that tattoo. Oh, yeah. this third eye blind tattoo is hilarious. Show it to camera. All right, so look at the guy. Yeah. So when I went in, I was 19. I went to my tattoo artist, and I said, hey, man, I want a unique third eye blind tattoo. Can we find, like, a business guy? And then they give him a third eye with like cataracts. So yeah. his third eye is blind. So it's like symbolism. 
So that's what he goes on Google. He finds this image. He colors it in. He changes it for me. So I've got this tattoo. I'm loving it. I go to check into the Zaza Hotel in Houston. You can. I think he'll be able to zoom in on it. Yeah. Try it, Georgia. Is that, is that as much? He's doing it. As far yeah. as it'll go. Right. Okay. So I go to check in this hotel, and the kid behind the counter while I'm checking in goes, man, that's a nice R. Crumb piece. I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, on your arm, that's an R. Crumb. And I was like, no, nah, dude, it's like a third eye blind tattoo. And he goes, all right. I get up to my room, and I Google it. Sure as shit. This is Robert Crumb. He created Fritz the Cat. <laughs> he was the creator of all of the hypersexual like adult cartoons. Has a bunch of rape allegations and a bunch of super bad skeletons yeah. in his closet. And this is his self-portrait on acid. This is just tattooed on my body as a third eye blind homage. That is fucking amazing. And I tweeted it at the lead singer of fucking Third Eye Blind, Stephen Jenkins. Stephen Jenkins, yeah. And was like, hey man, look, I got this third eye blind tattoo. I'm naming it Mr. Jenkins after you. And he said, ha, gay. <laughs> No way. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So I, I went to the show, by the way. Fuck. Yeah. I met them here at Stubbs. I paid an absurd amount of money to go and watch their like pre-show and get to meet him and Brad Hargreaves. I, so here's the weird thing. They're a fan. great fucking live band, dude. Yeah. Uh, and they're actually a really good band. I went, so full, full disclosure here, because mm -hmm. I know that's your favorite band. I went, I took my wife in Wilmington, North mm -hmm. Carolina, uh, as a joke. Like, we were like, oh, hey, what are you doing? Like, no bands come to Wilmington, so it was just like, hey, Third Eye Blind's here. Fuck it, let's yeah. go. And so we were sitting there, and as the hits kept coming, I finally had to acknowledge the fact that they were a great band and they were great live. Yeah. And so when they came to Ventura, it was during the, the, the pandemic, uh, and mm -hmm. you had to sit in your car. If you got out of your car, you had to put a mask on, like, and sit there. And then they were on a stage. So here's the whole thing with concerts and cars. Mm hmm <coughs> they're plugged in excuse me they're all their instruments are plugged in so you can't hear them so if you're a normal dude just chilling out without headphones on uh you won't be able to hear the band you have to turn it on the radio station because they didn't want people rushing the stage and then sharing covid or whatever the fuck they thought was going to happen so you just sit in a within four feet of your car and then listen to them through the speakers and then that was wow. how you heard them, yeah. But it was weird because they... Why did they do it through the radio? Um, so that way you couldn't get out and you couldn't go up to the stage. So you had to be around your car or near your car to hear it. Otherwise, that's it. No, but if it was in the radio in your car, then you couldn't get out of the car. Right. You wouldn't hear it. Uh, no, if you just, you know, pull open the back door or whatever. Like, we had the doors open. Uh, I was driving like a rental minivan, so mm -hmm. like I just popped the trunk and we sat in the trunk and yeah. I was with my six-year-old at the time and uh, we just, you listened. But what you're listening to is their live performance on stage. So but you still, can that, see them, yeah. but you can't hear them. And I even walked up there like an asshole. And I was yeah, of course. Like, can I? And then nothing. How many kids do you have? Two. Two kids. Do you recommend it? Yes, but when you're older. Not now. I, I would tell everybody this. Wait till your mid-30s to get married. And then really blow it out. Once you're ready and you're like, all right, unless there's fucking four contortionists from Tucson, there's nothing else I could possibly stick my dick in in this life. <laughs> like, then get married. Because then, at that point, you want to be a good dad and, like, a, a decent husband and a person. Yeah. Otherwise, if there's still something left on the plate, you're like, ah, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I had a girlfriend, every time I would meet a hot girl that was mildly into me, I would hate my girlfriend. Yes. So, that's, that's why you do it and you wait. How old are you right now? 28. Yeah. So wait, so you got seven years. Wait, I, I mean, seven years. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna. I, I would be a great father because I would just well, teach him all this stuff. That would I, be like, no, 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 very hey, fun to watch. I, I would love be. The I would be there. Uh, uh, I listen, love the confidence there. The most. I would be a terrible husband, but I'd be a great father. Mm -hmm. That's like the Jim Jeffries bit. Yeah. It's like I would love to have a wife that gave me a kid, and if she could just, she die, could just die, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh... Giorgio, pop open the, uh, I had to text it to you, wouldn't let me airdrop it. Yes. There it is. So there's the Bill Schofield, you're welcome. There's the Aaron Hernandez pick I took of, of him and my buddy. Look at the smile on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amrish, shout out to Amrish. I love you, Amrish. Look at, look at the hand placement. We, we, we always call him my brown friend. He's my brown friend. So if you look right there. Is that post-murder? You can. Yes. So he had just murdered, according to the doc, looking at the timeline, he had just killed two people about a month or two before. But if you look closely on your friend's shirt uh, mm -hmm. on the our bottom left of the screen, you can see that Aaron has his hand around him. He's gripping him. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no hover hand. No. He's holding. Oh, he's him like, tightly. you're not getting away from he, me. Yeah. He's like, hey, you're you're in my grasp. I have you. But also, so he's like got, the whole he's thing got with underhooks. him. Yeah. 
I've always thought it's so fascinating the way that like closeted people like deal with that. Cause that was his whole deal is he wanted to be gay and he couldn't be gay. Yeah. And then he ended up really? doing stuff to try and prove how masculine and bravado he was. I'm going to murder people, dude. Yeah. I'm a yeah. fucking gangster. I'm not gay. But yeah. like if he had been able to be gay and a gangster, yeah. That would have been so much cooler if he was just like, yo, I'm going to take your money and fuck you. I'm a fucking six-time pro bowler, and I'll suck your dick. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. That would have been rad. Only thing better than my hands is my dome. Oh, my you know? dome, dude. Right? You're in the wrong neighborhood, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Did Jack Mandeville just walk in? Where's he at? Come on, come on in behind camera here. Uh, is your shirt on? Yeah. Definitely take that off. Uh, show him this Aaron Hernandez picture. I just want his thoughts on this. Uh, does he have? I thought he used to take his shirt off, like have an Aaron Hernandez. There he is. Look at that, dude. That is a burn. So he does our uh, Patreon show on Friday nights, the Friday Night Jack Sesh. It's a call-in show where he's horrific. <laughs> Did you get sunburned? Is that what happened to you? Uh, I was flooding the river on a Tuesday because I didn't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> Floating a river on a tree. Oh, look at <laughs> I that. I fucking love you it. You look, look like you ate Tom Segura that. after leg day. <laughs> is, it, is there a microphone on back there? Can we give it to Jack? Oh, it's so great. Look at him. Look at I love that's it. That's an athlete. Absolutely. We just showed a picture of Aaron Hernandez, and this is a real athlete. That is right peak male conditioning. Hi, Jack. How are you, buddy? Hey, Ross. <laughs> You're out of breath. We I came smoking? early for work today. <laughs> I always come early. Why are you horrifically sunburned in like weird spots? Did you lotion up some spots and not others? I uh, fell in the river because I couldn't get back in my tube after two wines. <laughs> <laughs> and it washed away the sunscreen that I had applied a half hour before. <laughs> I, uh, I'm hanging in there. That is incredible. Wait, that's the I'm brown hanging guy hanging the picture? Uh, no, no. no. from the Aaron Hernandez picture? No, no. I'm hanging in there. Uh, what are you talking about on, on tonight's Patreon? Drinking Bros Podcast Patreon. Oh, you, I didn't really tonight? sleep well last night, so I'm hoping the callers are going to carry the show today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll probably I'll probably take at least two or three cigarette breaks if if we got a good flow going on. Sure, sure. Uh, we were and the reason why I wanted you to have a microphone. We're about to talk about uh, Martin Luther King. Um, Eli was uh, unfamiliar here that uh, Martin Luther King used to have orgies and cheat on his wife religiously and just drop loads in people. Uh, as any good Southern pastor would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was white women. Like, that was the, that was the jam back then. Still, yeah. well, still the jam. Can't, now, can't blame a man for, for falling to that kryptonite right there. No. Oh, that's the move. Uh, do you remember uh, Don't Be a Menace while drinking your juice in the hood in South yeah, yeah, Central? Yeah, yeah. When uh, that African, like, uh, wearing the dashiki... He's he's with this white woman and he's like, oh, he's preaching about this like pro black. It's one of the shit. funniest scenes like, of all time. What are you what yeah. are you doing fucking all these white women? And he's like, I'm just trying to do what they've been doing to us for 400 years. Fuck them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And then this just popped up like two days ago. RG3, the quarterback, posted a, yeah. a picture with his white girlfriend and he was just like lambasted. Yeah. I'll crush for it. And it's it so like, insane to me because like it it's like one of the things that you can see like woke white women and black women unite over. Yeah. It's like attractive black men with white girlfriends. <laughs> They're like, that's wrong. We don't, we're like together on that. It's the only thing that brings you down. Dude, uh, I, have, OJ. I have nothing against black After men. After Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> oh yeah, Sammy Davis Jr. too, yeah. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Who else in history, Jack, do you know? Of? Uh, Sammy Davis Jr., OJ, of course. Obviously. The, uh, the epicenter of going after white women. Yep. In m many ways, he went after them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, j uh, the, the old boxer, Johnson, Jack Johnson. Ah. Yeah. You don't say. It banana ruined his pancakes. career. CTE, yeah, he made banana pancakes with it. Uh, <laughs> good work. Uh, Sammy Sosa turned into a white woman. He did. Have you ever looked at those pictures? Oof. We've numerous times we've had that on the show. He looks like an extra in Interview with a Vampire. Oh yeah, dude, it's fucking bad. Listen, yeah. I, got, I got to look like he did it by by hand. Yeah, he, he bleached himself by hand. Yeah. 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 I want to take on this. So I, I have nothing against black men. Sure. At all. <laughs> I think this question. Okay. <laughs> but white women that are exclusively into black men, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, you know. 
It's always interesting that you can spot them from so far. I have a... Th <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always thought is unique about that. It's like, if there is a white girl standing 50 yards from me and she's exclusively into black men, I know. She's got the gold hoops. And so do you. No, it's there's something about the makeup. I have a theory the makeup, on it. Yeah. I have a theory on it. Mm -hmm. I think... I think they grew up in a, in a white household where they were told that it was don't date black guys, don't date black yeah, guys. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, fuck you, I'm gonna date black guys. And then it just became the thing. And it's so specific that you're like, all right, that's, cool. That's well, also yeah. how I feel about the city of Austin. I feel like Austin is like the slutty daughter of conservative Texas. Yeah. Dude, uh, I'm gonna be a liberal. I'm yeah. gonna have my nipples out and not shave my armpits. Dude, I, I saw a woman yesterday coming out of my child's daycare with just no bra, fuck the world, mm -hmm. and kind of like gray hair when you're younger and you're like, well, you don't want to dye that. And she's like, no, fuck you. This is my life. Mm -hmm. As you're driving to your $2 million house and you're just like, all right, sweet. I saw a butt naked woman on Congress last uh, yesterday. Hot or not? No. <laughs> the Almost pass passable. Public Almost nudity is never super passable. attractive people. Okay. There's never, like, when you go to, oh, like, no, no, no. Hippie I, I Hollow. Went, dude, I went to Barton Springs. I saw the hottest, like, four years ago when I visited, I saw the hottest girl ever. Uh, topless, great tits. And I was like, hey, how's it going? And then she just started crying. She's like, I'm going through a divorce. And I was like, all right, nice to meet you. Yeah, good to see you. Good yeah. to see you. Jack, down in San Antonio, what do you, what do you run into? Because it's, you know, Charles Barkley just got uh, nuked for talking shit about San Antonio women anymore. Yeah, uh, look, uh, the Tinder sitch there, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, single mom heavy. Yeah. Real single mom heavy. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a chubbier town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good food uh, scene. A lot of, lot of community college grads, though, so it's educated, kind of. <laughs> Did you dip a toe in? Are you still with a Swedish girl? Yes. Okay, so you're, yeah, out, you're out of the Tinder world. That's serious. I'm out of the Tinder world. Uh, but, yeah, I did dip my, my toe in and a few other things and got some, <laughs> yeah, yeah. got some scabs from that. Yeah, are you still living there? Downtown. Yeah. Proud of you. So you see it every day. Every day. I yeah. walk that river walk. I, I, I get there before. I, I do it early before the, the tourists get there. It's just me and the homeless guys and the people cleaning up from the night before. Sure. Sure. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it on this uh, YouTube. I'm looking at the quality of you here. It's amazing. That, that sunburn is, is first class. Yeah, it is. First class. You're a second, sa second class citizen, but a first class su sunburn for sure. Uh, going back to our earlier conversation, some would consider me three fifths of a person. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You uh, can join Jack Mandeville in about an hour. Would you say an hour, Jack, on the Jack sesh? We do about Patreon? an hour and a half. It's a, yeah, uh, yeah, depending on how high Giorgio is. So, uh, yeah. Obviously. What time are you guys getting started tonight? Uh, we try to do six on the dot. All right, six on the dot. Six on the dot it is. Join Jack Manville on Drinking Bros uh, Podcast Patreon. How did you not know the thing about MLK, by the way? That's crazy to me. I, I don't know how to answer that. And you believe that John McAfee didn't get shit on? I didn't say I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that I, I respect John McAfee. I think he died for a cause. And I don't want to drag his name through the dirt. Okay. What was All the right. cause? Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if he died for it, you should know it pretty quick. No, like, well, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> what it's, did you it, die for? Well, I mean, he was he was a hardcore libertarian. He didn't believe in taxes. He uh, he believed in uh, crypto was his thing that he was he was really focused on at the time, and uh, just basically. So he oh, died freedom. so Dogecoin could run. Yeah, Pretty much. Uh, well, Bitcoin. He, he, I don't think he was a big Dogecoin guy. I, Dogecoin, uh, you heard, is stupid. I wanted to get back to something he brought up, though, about a lot of single moms on Tinder. Yeah. Back in my single days, sure. when I would go through, there, there'd be a lot of single moms on Twitter, on Tinder. Do they put the, the picture of their kids? That's what they do. And so that's what bothers me. Because I feel like when you go and you test drive a pre-owned car, mm -hmm. they don't show you a picture of the previous owner. So, like, I don't want to see the thing that ruined the vagina I'm interested in yeah. next to you in the picture. What if the kids are hot, though? Oof, that's another story altogether. That's, a, that's probably another website altogether. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. Wayfair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you I get them shipped to you. Yeah. I just, and they come with their own builders. But what you I don't get train them. is why none of, the, none of the people that had an extra, like, there are people on this planet that are idiots and have 16 grand to spare. Why didn't they order one of those Wayfair cabinets and just see if a kid came? Oh, dude. We, I, you I know like we thought about it on this show? There's a filtration process, probably. They're like, we don't know Ross Patterson. He exactly. He's not an elite pedoph pedophile. 
Yeah, he's, he's just a regular pedophile. He's just a lower <laughs> class pedophile. Yeah. We had a serious discussion on the show about ordering one of the $16,000 cabinets um, off of Wayfair and yeah. having it sent here. Yeah. It ultimately proved to be a little too costly, so we used it on a, a lifelike sex doll. Okay. Now, they have no. a refund policy, though. Uh, the sex doll? No, they don't. No, the no, sixteen thousand dollar cabinet. Those. Oh, oh, do they really? I'm sure it's uh, it's a big big company. Everyone has a good. Uh, we'll fact check that. I'm not uh, sure in Wayfair, but multi million dollar companies doll. all have a good return policy. That's this, how they stay in business. The sex doll we got, and that thing was uh, that was used. Did you guys all try it? A uh, used sex doll? No, no, no. Somebody else used it in the in the studio at the time. You still have it? Hey, it was somebody at Black Rifle Jack, by the way. <laughs> Dude, I went when I first. You still have it? Uh, no, they. You guys blow it up in a sketch or something? Oh man! They went to Eli Cuevas's house. Oh, it did yeah, but it got blown up, right? Whoa! They went. They just went super <laughs> tight on you. <laughs> it's there. So I know, it's awesome. Oh, I like this a lot, Jack. Uh, if you're looking at, if you're, <laughs> if you want to know what a pedophile looks like, that's Jack Mandeville right there. Look at that. No. Yeah, I, look, look at the camera and give your best pedophile. No, he doesn't look. have the, the corner of the lips curling up. All the pedophiles <laughs> had that. You know how they did like a study where you can tell if someone's gay and like. <laughs> okay, there it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. You want to go to the pumpkin party? <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I'm going to jerk it. What are you guys up to? <laughs> yeah. uh, interviewing at Penn State next week. Actually. Dude, I want to give yeah. you a back yeah. massage. Proud of you. <laughs> Proud of you. <laughs> you got to, these big-ass traps. Yeah, dude, if you want a back massage, he'll do it. Uh, he'll do it with a Theragun, too. It's one Ooh. of our sponsors. Ooh. Best in the biz. Hit me. Would it be, would that, I mean, would that be, would you allow that? Using a Theragun on no, another man? No, no, man? have him use a Theragun on you. Like, is that I would something? welcome that. I'm very sore. I work out way too much, and I slept like two hours last night. Hey, if the Theragun's around, uh, you want to pop back behind here, do it. Yeah, go ahead yeah, and grab it. Yeah, that'd be it. hilarious. I don't know if you could do an interview with it, Giorgio. That, that thing really shakes you. It it's does fucking it? great. It's the greatest goddamn thing on the planet. Yeah? The hype is real on the Theraguns, by the way. Okay. Like, I got a knockoff one. We're fucking real. Dude, they're down to, on, on ours, uh, God, I'm trying to remember it. It's uh, Theragun... Dot com either slash drinking bros or the promo code is drinking bros, but uh, it's it's a hundred ninety nine dollars. Wow, fucking dope as wow. shit. Wow, this was the first thing when it came into the office. Yeah, come around, give. Yeah, yeah. How trusting are you? Like, just uh, bend over a little bit. Let him use the the blades, dude. There you go. There you go. You want lower <laughs> upper? You want lower upper? Uh, I'll start upper. Yeah. There it is. Get that thing jacked. Uh, I'm so uh, from throwing all these bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. You might want to grip the desk. It's intense. How crazy is that fucking thing? This is nice. Yeah, right? Oh, dude, it's like auto-tune. We should record a rap song while you do this. Man, I watched that auto-tune thing, uh, that doc on uh, T-Pain the other night on, on Netflix. Is it good? He almost killed himself. Really? Yeah. He said Usher brought him out of first class, woke him up, had the stewardess wake him up and go to the back of the plane. And, we, and he said to him in this plane, hey, man, I think you fucking killed music. And uh, singing and everything else. And he said he was depressed for like four years. Wow. wow. It got dark. And I was, I was like, oh, all right. Uh, Shit, man. I mean, yeah, how's that? Have you, have you heard T-Pain sing without autotune? It's amazing. He's an amazing singer. So they put it in the it. dock when he, when he went on Tiny Desk on, on the NPR and sang. And it was fucking incredible. And people were like, holy shit, T-Pain, dude. How legit is the Theragun, by the way? This is amazing. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and in the background, just seeing Jack do it with this <laughs> face. Is, yeah, it's awesome. That could be your, your new He's Tinder like, why profile. are you 12? Yeah, that could be your new <laughs> Tinder profile right there. Uh, but he's really good at it. And he takes it seriously, more importantly. Yeah, and if it's you're like just a power tuning wash. in right now, <laughs> <laughs> if you're just tuning in right now wondering what the fuck is going on, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Do you smell that? <laughs> What's that smell like, Jack? There it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like lumbar. <laughs> Fucking incredible. Look at him just loafing around, dude, the studio. I My lumbar's it. feeling limber right now. Goddamn right great. it is. Goddamn right it is. Uh, so is uh, Saturday Night Show, who's on it? Is it, is it Malik? Is that the one? Or you uh, guys this one coming out we, this Saturday we, is mm -hmm. actually uh, welcome uh, everybody to come see what the Giggle Boys are about. It's just a solo episode of me and Eli. That's duo. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, du yeah. You duo. don't necessarily need guests on shows. We've, we like, don't. But when, uh, we, when it's just me and Mike, like we kind of run out of shit. So we got to bring in guests to like keep things new shit coming up. Because we talk about... The more know, and more you time. get used to, to the, the podcast format, like, because, like, shows with Dan and I do better than, like, well, so most celebrities and shit like that. But yeah. it's, you it's also want to get a mainstream frame. audience as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. And we want to help, you know, 
get people out there too. Like I want to help my friends get more recognition as well. Of course, of course, yeah. Yeah. But the two of you guys, the more you get used to it, then dude, you'll just go for hours on fucking. Yeah, and we we occasionally will get into a riff too. Like, especially if Eli has a couple drinks Mm -hmm. and like, you know, I smoke enough good weed. Like we'll get into a riff, we'll talk for, you know, two, two and a half hours, no problem. But you know, it's it's also fun to have a another guest, especially like so we just had Malik on. And Eli and Malik have known each other for a while and mm-hmm. have like gone, you know, their own routes in comedy. And it's just cool to watch and see, you know, where they were, where they are. Uh, that makes for a fun conversation. Comedian wise, who's who's who is your, your guy all time? If we're just going like stand up, stand up, mm-hmm. Daniel Tosh, probably. No shit. Like for his stand up, like the album People Pleaser. Like I say this all the time, like his albums are slept on. He was a fucking monster. And then he got all this Comedy Central money. And you know, doing so Tosh. Point, no, you called, don't need to keep fucking. Well, when I so when he I called I, women whores and got like a standing ovation. Oh, that was him. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, shit. I remember so when I first moved to Los Angeles. He was the headliner on. Fuck, I think it was the, the Comedy Store. Okay. No, I'm sorry. It was the Laugh Factory. Mm-hmm. How long ago is this? <sighs> Many moons ago. Yeah, and, he hasn't um, he hasn't done. Sta- I haven't I'm seen not, him do stand up in a while. Well, he, he'll do it in Vegas and get a shit ton of money for it. Yeah. But not, which I, I always fucking want to buy tickets to that when I see him going, and they sell out so fast. Oh, dude. So when, when I moved there, it was Daniel Tosh, and it was just like, all right, cool. Like, But Peter Tosh and all those guys were big back then, so you'd look at this name and think, ask if they were related. Peter Tosh? Y- yes. Okay. Well, it was the only Tosh there, only reggae. famous Tosh there Old was. Old school right? reggae. That's Yes. People so, always like, oh, I love reggae. Oh, Bob Marley. That's that's it? That's all you got? No, yeah. Peter Tosh was a legend. Yeah. So people, I, I don't think they knew just from the name, and like social media didn't exist or any of that shit. Mm-hmm. So like, you physically had to walk in and see these fucking people were and uh and then he did it for years nothing and then he gets a fucking clip show on comedy central and is richer than jesus and he needs nothing now like, yeah um but I, but i mean like i go back and i listen to his albums I, I mean they are probably my most listened to albums it's just like uh true stories that i made up mm-hmm. happy thoughts like they're just they're great fucking albums he's he's probably my goat for comedy. him or chad daniels He's the other guy. I, I, f- I thought that's what you were going to say. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Eli? Who's your guy? Well, Doug Stanhope. Yep. Which I mentioned. Yep. Um, that's, that's like number one. Uh, Louis C.K. Louis's um, always been great. I mean, look. The- Corey Holcomb had a set. If you look it up on YouTube, Corey Holcomb, all-star comedy jam that uh, Shaquille O'Neal put together. Oh, yeah. He yeah. had a five-minute set, which I think is like the best five minutes of all time. And then Louis C.K., uh, had a, I think, seven to 10 minute set. Uh, just type in Louis C.K. rape fetus. Okay. And uh, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's up there as well. Yeah, he, look, he was fucking lights out, man. And then all that shit happened. And I don't know what's going to happen with him now. Well, did you watch his special he released last year? No, because it was on his own thing, right? Yeah, we yeah. bought it. We watched it at my house. I'm happy to pay that five bucks. To S- yeah, same, and I, and I don't mind. I just didn't know how to watch it on television. Like, I didn't want to. So you can download it on, like, I, I bought it on my phone and then just airplayed it onto my TV. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, uh, Dan Cummins. Uh, I don't remember the name of the special. It was the one where uh, he likes making people uncomfortable. Like, when he gets in an elevator, he's like, I assume you're all wondering why I've gathered you here today. Yeah, <laughs> like I still do that every time I get in an elevator. He's, that was a pretty influential one for me. So he's a buddy in real life. I actually don't know his stand-up. Uh, wow. Dan does, um, my co-host. But uh, I, I didn't know his stand-up. I did a gig with him. He was hosting Playboy Radio mm-hmm. uh, back in like 2014, I think is when mm-hmm. we met. And I was doing press for a book. And he was just a fucking great guy, really fucking funny. And he was around nude Playmates all day long. That was the gig at Play, Playboy Radio. Wow. Do, you know, do you know Bill Dawes? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, not yeah, in real life, but he's he's one of my favorites too. I know of him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bill Dawes is great. He's, he's, he's here in Austin now too. Is he really? Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's I've, he's rather unknown. I would I would love if Dan moves here. Dan Cummins lives in uh, Idaho. Yeah. Um, but he's great. His podcasts are great, and uh, and I'm just a, a friend of his in real life. But um, yeah, he's just a great. What human. about you? Who are your, who's your like favorite stand up? Man, I, I'm in a different era, obviously. Yeah, of course. A couple years. I'm a couple summers older than you guys. But uh, as a kid, the one that traveled was was uh, Eddie Murphy, obviously. Yeah. Delirious. Like, when that got around, yep. it was like a VCR tape. You were just was like, that the oh, one where he's crazy. telling everyone that their husband's Ice cream, ice cream. Um, it was that one. It was talking about the ice cream man and shit. Red leather suit, the yeah. whole fucking thing. And I didn't get that until years after it came out. But that's how big... He was and how great he was was like 
people were still passing that around years later. It was like, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I need to go back and rewatch that as like a adult that's like doing comedy. Because like I saw that before I was like really into comedy. And I think a lot of it, I just didn't appreciate how good it was. Because like I, I piss people off all the time because I say I think George Carlin is ass. Like, it is, just, well, here's the thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different time. So like the comedy is different now and mm -hmm. it changes throughout the years. So like... If, if you're asking me, like, well, like my all time favorite one was was probably You So Crazy about Martin Lawrence, mm -hmm. um, just because of the storytelling. I've actually never seen him. And his, his ability to do characters. Um, and the Martin show and all that shit, like, dude, that was 90 minutes of just pure fucking insanity. And I was like, yeah. Oh my God. It, like that one, that is number one for me all time. You So Crazy is probably number, okay. one, number one for me all time. Ron White was my first favorite comedian. Oh, dude, Ron White's great. Tater salad. I think I was maybe in like fifth grade. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was my favorite special. He's I mean, great. But mine. over the years, <laughs> if you notice, it, it'll go in trends. So like there was a trend where people were doing this fucking underground club. Uh, Whitney Cummings was hosting it. Uh, it was like a Mexican restaurant. And you, you had to go down to the basement. Mm -hmm. And um, Dimitri Martin. Mm -hmm. Oh, I fucking love him. It was big. But, like, there was a, a period of time where there was a bunch of weird comedians like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who were just kind of telling one-liners. One of my buddies, uh, Nick Thune. Yeah, fucking put in hilarious. A couple movies. He's hilarious, but he'll just get, go up with a guitar. Yeah. Do a one-liner and then move on to the next, the next, the Bo next. Bo Burnham? Next. No. You don't like him? Don't. Did you watch the new special? He, he's, one of my, he's one of my favorites. I did. I thought it was garbage. Uh, I, I only watched it because... I liked all of his old specials, and I've always thought he was clever and funny, and not necessarily like just straight up comedy. But he's interesting and thought provoking. And I watched this last one, and I felt like I was just watching him jerk himself off for fucking hours. Oh, that's what I thought too. Um, I'm well, not, a, but I'll get killed for that. I get killed for as that. a narcissist. I can respect that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also Dude, I actually I actually went to a therapist once, like a long time ago. I just tried it out because literally everyone said I should be in therapy. And I was like, yeah. I told the therapist, I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a narcissist. So you know. Do with that what you will. And she was like, you're not a narcissist. I know that because you're you're admitting you're a narcissist, and a narcissist would never do that. It's true. And I was like, oh, so I'm actually better than everyone. <laughs> <laughs> was she hot? It was uh, It was on uh, one of those online ones. Okay. All right. Did you get to see her? She was a black woman. Okay. And that's not your thing? I didn't say that. Well, you're, I'm asking you just, now. I don't know. It's just... Uh, it's that's too close to like a, that's like it's too close to an intimate me. relationship. I don't see like colors. I don't care. You know? Oh, that's good. You know, yeah. I'm colorblind. Yeah. I'm retarded. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't give a shit. Um, you know, people like you should never judge people. You totally should. Yes. Judgment is like a mark of intelligence. I judge everybody. You yeah. should all day long. I judge you as a great guy. Fuck yeah. That doesn't well, have to be a negative thing. You don't. You, you don't even have to say that, but you know, you never know. You're okay, like, you're a terrible a, person, but I like a you a lot. It's a horrific human being, yeah. Because I've worked with people who I thought they were talented, were her horrific human beings, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. So th we were talking about this the other day. Like, I, one of the things that's very unique to comedy is that when a comedian gets canceled, the overwhelming response is not they're a bad person, it's that they're not funny. Yeah. When R. Kelly and Michael Jackson and all these other people get canceled, no one was like, their music's fucking ass. Everybody was just like, they're fucked up. Yeah, that's a great point. But like, you know, Chris D'Elia and Louis C.K. and all these people get canceled and they're like, they're never fucking funny. They're never funny anyway. People yeah. that like them are fucking idiots. And it's like, you like them. You, you everyone you liked like them. them. All, and, all then, them. and then a bunch of like open micers will be like, yeah, I'll never be on a show with them. Like, yeah, you weren't going to. No, anyways. you weren't going to in the first place. It wasn't going to happen for you anyways in this life. Um, I wonder what happens with D'Elia. So like he's that still doing his podcast. Yeah. He just brought it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His he, first but he did just sell like, his Beverly Hills mansion quietly. Five point four million dollar mansion. Well, I was looking through the pictures. Every, it was gorgeous. Everybody, <laughs> I saw everybody him, wants uh, to get out of LA. So I don't know if that had to do. I, it. I saw him post a picture with his kid, and I was like, oh, he's growing his own now. <laughs> <laughs> he's such an interesting one because, like, I mean, he's pulling the Tiger Woods route, where he's just like, it's sex addiction. Like, that's just my problem is I had a sex addiction, but I didn't do anything with minors. Like, I was just banging mad bitches and cheating on my wife or my fiance. And now every dude has a sex addict. Like, there's yeah. no that's not a thing. Like, my wife will say that all the time. She'll be like, it's not a fucking thing. Like, every dude has a sex addiction. Yeah, yeah I'm not a sex addict. I'm just not 40 yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the Giggle Boys are on every Saturday nights on uh, on our YouTube channel, Drinking Bros Podcast YouTube. I think we might change it to Drinking Bros Studios because we've got so many fucking shows now at this point. Shit, yeah. Uh, and then your audio show is uh, available everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, all that shit. You guys are yeah. fucking hilarious. Uh, and then, again, the, the audience was the one after the, the last time you guys were on. They were like, dude, get the fucking Giggle Boys on well, the network. Fucking rule. So I was like, hey, they're in the studio. Let's let's go live and do a bonus show today and get fucking weird. And then tune in to uh, Jack Mandeville and the Friday Night Jack yes. Sesh on Patreon tonight. Now that show gets so fucking graphic. I don't know. What, what do you think would happen if we aired that on YouTube? Like, for real. There it is. There it is. Put that, put that fucking... I'm actually not up to date with the YouTube standard and practices, Ross. That's what all these producers are here for. <laughs> to tell me what I can and can't say. Sure. With Patreon, I, I feel like I, I kind of have uh, free reign there. So I, I like it that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the K What's about? What's the K Is for? that a strikeout? What's the K? I just don't like it when my chick responds to me like that when I ask her a question. <laughs> just add three more. I'm from the Midwest, I mean, and I'm being too, real too. passive aggressive right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you want to give her the drinking bro of the week, so she doesn't break up with you? Please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to make the drinking bro of the week my girlfriend for being such a good girlfriend. I've learned like 300 words in Swedish because of you, and I'm glad that every nine days when you have a break from work, you make two days for me. So thank you. Yagalska day. There it is. There Ooh, it is. Not yeah. not pulling out Jack Mandeville, trying to have a baby. Uh, how long has it been now? Uh, I'm going to the doctor, Ross. I'm going to get checked, all right? Thank you. Thank you. That's why I brought that up today, Jack. Yeah. Are you Please, keeping your balls you. cool? Now it's you. Oh, that, boy. Because that's, that's something that's very important is the temperature of your balls. Because you, that's why they dangle from your body. Yes. Evolutionary is to keep them cooler from your internal temperature. And if your cums get too hot, then all the sperms die. And yeah. you're just shooting out fucking over easy oh, eggs. Oh, shit. Do you know his nickname? What? Big cums. Oh, hell yeah. 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 So yeah, I've been doing big cums, but I don't know if they're fertile cums. That's for sure. What? So you, Are they coming out doctor? with the consistency of an egg white? Or? No, I mean, I do big, healthy 25-year-old cums, but I, I just don't know if, like, the, 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 you know, the, the life in there is alive. Let's get it under a microscope. I'm sure we got one of those here. We'll this get a petri dish out. Will you bring the results? I on left the show? a specimen in that toilet bowl about a month ago Oof. before the show. Yeah, I bet you did. I I needed to. Yeah. I, I was getting stressed out about that show. Hey, somebody fucked on that couch. It broke. I don't think it's still here anymore. But uh, yeah. So you're welcome to jack off in the fucking toilet. We don't give a shit about that. Proud of you. But I, I, I was the one who said, go to a doctor and find out if you got anything. Uh, have you considered letting maybe Eli donate to your lady? Uh, that'll be a down the road thing, but I'd, have, I'd like a little control. Like I, I would want like maybe like an athlete, or like RG3. You can jerk me off. All right. No, no, no. He wants an athlete. <laughs> Dude, I because train fucking three hours a day. I know, but, yeah, but you, you got one. here with steroids. He wants someone who got there all natural. Yeah, dude, you want the natural shit. Um, yeah, and you'll you'll have a black kid. Oh, Bo Jackson anymore. Oh, I yeah. want Bo Jackson. Okay, I want Bo. I will be stepdad to Bo Jackson's children for sure. Great. What, what about uh, who's the JJ Watt? Oh man, that'd that's be a great who I'd one. want to father yes. my kid. You know who JJ Watt is? Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's uh, he plays uh, in the league yeah 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 yeah, yeah. He, exactly. does. he plays uh in He's the nfl league guy big league guy huge league guy on that one uh, yeah but his his vertical and stuff like watching that guy is just, it just looks like a albino rhino that's uh, huge doing a, guy's a yeah. fucking monster dude that's a good one like jj watt would be a good father see that's what i i was talking to my wife about this like i if i don't want to have normal kids because like my dna is dog shit I, yeah. everything up here is awful my liver's a champ but the rest is falling apart i sure. want to have a retarded kid you know so like i want a designer kid so, you know, like, CRISPR right. baby, yeah. Yeah, so I want to get, like, J.J. Yeah, Watt dude. as the dad. Yep. And then, like, I've been trying to think about who do we have as the mom. Oh, because she doesn't want to have the baby either? Oh, I, I was just saying, like, if I if we can pick anybody, like, if we, I don't want to put her through childbirth. Sounds miserable. Oh, so. She don't want to do with that. So, yeah, I, again, my wife was talking about this uh, as well, where she was like, dude, if you can just pick somebody to have your child for you, like, that's the ultimate flex of being rich, of just like, hey, like Kim Kardashian did it. She had a couple ones for real. Yeah. And then the last two were just like, hey, you do this. You do this. You have the fucking babies. I'm not going to do it. 
I'm going JJ, JJ Watt and Kristen Cavallari. I think that's my call. JJ Watt and Kristen Cavallari. I, look, it's a good one. She was married to an NFL player. I would just call Cutler. myself. Yeah, Cutler. They, they got divorced because he was cheating. Oh, I've, was that it? And then she sued for This is a big contention in my house because uh, my wife is obsessed with Kristen Cavallari and mm-hmm. her brand Uncommon James, yeah. which is a jewelry brand. She started with the money she got from Jay Cutler. And then she got mad at Jay Cutler for being a workaholic. And was like, it's all he wants to do is fucking work. And then he got and he got done with the NFL. And like, now he's lazy. And so now that they're getting a divorce, she's like, well, uh, I should get half of his money. And he's like, no, no, no. I get half of Uncommon James. Yes. Yeah. I, I gave you the money to start it. You were only able to do that because of me. And so it's like, well, yeah, he cheated. So he's the bad guy. But like also, he gave you the money for the business. Oh, it was a fucking, uh, it was a lot. Jay Cutler made a lot of fucking money for mm-hmm. the Bears. Um, I think everyone should raise a clone of themselves. Like, I you know, of, you know like all me. the shit that you're into and how you were as a kid. I think you'd be able to raise your clone very well. Maybe, but the, the fucked up thing is, so you can crisp them up, right? You can pick the eye color and do all that other shit in China. And yeah. that's great, right? Because in the future, you're going to be wanting the Brad Pitt baby. And every, I think everybody's going to want that, that version, right? Yeah. Uh, the Legends of the Fall version of Brad Pitt where you're just like, all right, yeah. juice my lady up with that, right? Yeah. The problem is the, the, the mind. So you can't control what they're going to think like and all that other stuff. You, you have no idea. Yeah. And they're totally different. Like I have two kids that are totally different. I'm like, shit, man. Uh, how was that possible? Yeah. So when we reach that level where you can control their minds and all that other shit, then yeah. See, that's the part, though, is like I'm worried about that because it gets to be like at the end of a video game when you've already maxed out all the levels and mm-hmm. it's just not fun anymore because you're like, I killed the boss. It was easy. I have all the cool armor. You know, like it, it's like once we can already make people perfect, like then where does like our natural competition come in? You can control children's minds. It's called emotional abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jack, you want to lead us out here tonight? Uh, I'd hate to waste you since we have a camera on you, you know? Thank you, everybody. As they say in the Swedish language, Jagalska <laughs> Day, I love you. Thank you for coming on to Drinking Bros and listening to this program with the Giggle Boys and Ross Patterson and Jack Manville in place of Dan Holloway. <laughs> yes. Go tune into Patreon tonight. Watch Jack Manville, the Friday Night Jack Sesh. There'll be a call in number, as always, if he takes your call. Who knows? That's anyone's guess. And in the meantime, go check out the Giggle Boys. Download. Uh, subscribe, and rate and review the show on uh, iTunes, Spotify, and all of your other podcast mediums. And their show airs uh, every Saturday night on our network. Uh, thanks for being here, gentlemen. Thanks for we having us. We love you. Welcome Woo. to the network. Check out giggleboys.com, too. Yeah, giggleboys.com. For Eli and Mike, I'm Ross Patterson and Jack Mandeville. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.